In this video series, I will talk about the elementary proof of prime number theorem due to Selberg and Erdős. I plan to make this video series accessible to undergraduate students and ambitious high school students. What I expect the audience to know or accept are the following. First, I expect you to know the notion of prime numbers and the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, namely the unique factorization theorem or prime factorization theorem, which says any positive integer n greater than 1 can be written uniquely as a product of prime numbers. The second thing I assume the audience know is the binomial formula. I assume you know that a plus b raised to the nth power is equal to the summation from r equal to 0 to n of n choose r times a to the r times b to the n minus r, where this binomial coefficient n choose r is equal to n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial. And thirdly, I assume you know basic calculus. Namely, I expect you to know the limits and lim soup, or in a shorthand notation, lim with a bar above and a lim if using the shorthand notation, this is lim with bar below. And I assume you know the derivatives. and integrals, which are covered in the first theory calculus. And in particular, you have to know the fundamental theorem of calculus. Or in other words, the Newton-Leibniz theorem. So these are what I expect the audience to know. And now, let me also tell you what I don't expect you to know. I will not assume the audience have the knowledge of arithmetic functions. You don't have to know the meaning of mu, psi, theta, lambda, etc. And you don't have to know their properties. For example, you don't have to know the Morbius inversion formula or any asymptotic formulas concerning the summation of these functions. I will talk about these functions from scratch. With this being said, let's start our journey. Now we begin with a brief history of prime number theorem. The study of the distribution of prime numbers has fascinated mathematicians since antiquity. It is only in modern times, however, that a precise asymptotic law for the number of primes in arbitrary long intervals has been obtained. For real number x bigger than 1, we let pi of x denote the number of primes less than x. In notations, this means pi of x is the summation of 1's with p less than or equal to x and p lives in the set of primes. Throughout this video series, we will often omit the notation p in p and just write pi of x equal to 
the summation of ones where p less than or equal to x. With the understanding that uh, this lowercase p here always means prime. Another famous prime number theorem tells us that pi of x is asymptotically close to x divided by logarithm of x for large x. And next, we're going to make this notation more precise by introducing its rigorous mathematical definition. And actually, we're not just going to introduce this one notation, but a bunch of notations, which will be used throughout this video series.